I'm the reason he doesn't do shows anymore because I, I had him sign everything I own. I'm Mike Avila with Sci-Fi Wire, and today I'm joined by Eisner Award-winning artist Paolo Rivera. Hi. Hey, thanks for joining us here. Thanks for having me. Out of, out of the Mythos books that you did, was there one that you were most uh, proud of? Captain America. That was the very last of all six issues, and I took about six months on it, and it involved a lot of research because it takes place in World War II. I wasn't like a huge Captain America fan when I started it, uh, but I was by the time I finished it. You also did work on a special print that was a, a cast and crew gift, right, for each of the Captain America films. Yeah, in particular, the first uh, cover that I did for Iron Man, it was Iron Man number 63, they ended up using that as the Hall of Armors uh, in Iron Man 3, uh, to the point where they even like did some mock-up posters based on my composition. So it, it's just weird that like as a newcomer, you know, that was the very first co cover I did, but it ends up being part of the lore of you know, something that goes back to the 60s right. and beyond. Uh, so when I went in there, uh, Jim Kruger brought me into the offices. I met a bunch of editors. They all said, you know, great job, kid. I was like 21 at the time. 21. Yeah, I know. Those are the days. <laughs> this was 2002. I think, I, you know, like I said, I was, I was still in school. And uh, I, I got in there, but they didn't know what to do with me. Uh, so I thought that was my end. I thought I was like golden. And then I left and, you know, with no work. And I didn't know what I, to expect, but I was hoping to at least get a call back or something. Uh, and then I emailed Casada that night and said, sorry, I missed you. Uh, he got back to me the next day and said, you're hired. Have you ever met any of the actors from the films that, that have gotten these uh, prints that you, that you created? No, I got, I've gotten a couple shout outs. Chris Evans uh, said my name, which was awesome. In some interview, he actually, I don't, I don't know if he had the, uh, the issue of Mythos, but he said he read it and he used that as inspiration for the first film. This is like back in 2011. I like posted that to my blog. Every, one, every couple months, I retweet it <laughs> just so people would be like, yeah, I know him, <laughs> even though I've never met him. So you're also working on Hellboy for Dark Horse. Yeah, yeah. So we did uh, a three-issue miniseries uh, for Hellboy starting in 2015. I think they all came out that year. And I've been doing a few covers for them here and there since. We wanted to do one a year. I couldn't do one last year. But this year we're going to do a one-shot. And I hope, I haven't gotten the script yet, but they asked me what I wanted to do. And I told them I'd love to do a ghost story in Daytona Beach, Florida, where I'm from. So I really want to draw Hellboy visiting Daytona Beach standing on the beach next to a sign that says, you know, uh, 10 miles an hour, which is what Daytona was famous for. You can drive on the beach. Uh, but then at the same time, just go uh, a mile inland and be faced with these ghosts from some old sugar uh, plantation. It's just kind of crazy. I just like that juxtaposition. It's just kind of a procedural almost, where they, they send the BPRD to different places across the U.S. or across the world, fight a ghost, and move on to the next one. Uh, and so... Uh, when they asked me what I wanted, I was like, well, I'm never going to get another chance to, to do something like that. Uh, so we might as well put it into Daytona. Characters like that must be uh, a great challenge for you to tackle as a painter. Yeah, uh, Hellboy, you know, anytime I hear an, uh, an interview with Mignola talking about the, the creation of Hellboy, he said, I just wanted to create somebody who was always fun to draw. And he, he is. He's like perfect. You never get bored with drawing him because he's, you know, he's bright red. You can have him where he's all ripped up and then, you know, the horns, it, it's all just very iconic and you, you almost can't, can't mess up. You've drawn a lot of Marvel characters. Um, are there any characters in, in that universe that you'd like to tackle in the future? Uh, 90s X-Men. 90s X-Men? Yeah, because, you know, I've, I've, done, I've done my fair share of X-Men over, over the past 15 years, but uh, Mythos X-Men, that was classic, you know. You know, w w the way DC is doing, like, Batman 66, they need to do, Marvel needs to do X-Men. Well, they have one. They have a 90s. I, I know, but like, How have you I, not I, was, on that? I was already out by, by the time that happened. And, you know uh, a guy or two know, at that company? I know, I know. It's, I've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did. I saw that and I was like pretty jealous. So yeah, I, I'd say like that era X-Men. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that's, that's really when I started reading the actual comics because before then, as a kid, you know, 12, 13 years old, it was mostly the cartoons. I would watch Batman the Animated Series. You know, that's just one era of X-Men I never really, never really got to try, even though I got to do almost everybody else in the Marvel Universe. Talk about the differences in, in, in styles between your 
paintings and Alex's and other painters and, and also any influences that, that have really uh, had an impact on your work? Uh, well, when I first started, I, I mean, growing up, I was just, I was almost too big of an Alex Ross fan. I like copy everything. I dragged my parents to Megacon, made them bring all of my books. I always say that he's the reason that, he, that uh, I'm the reason he doesn't do shows anymore because I, I had him sign everything I owned, which basically my entire collection was all Alex, Alex Ross. When I actually got the job at Marvel, I wanted to kind of make sure that I wasn't aping his style too much, which is one reason I went into oil, because you kind of can't make it look like his. Uh, I eventually ended up using gouache, which is the medium that he uses, but only after I, my style had matured to a point where I wasn't afraid that I was just copying his style. Uh, but as far as like my own style, uh, you know, you just... You have an idea in your mind, you never quite get there, and wherever you end up, that's, that's what your style is. Paolo, thanks for letting us come by and talk with you. Thank you pleasure. so much. Thanks for coming.